Jesus was like this 2,000 years ago. He promised to return a second time, but this time to judge the earth after coming to earth, dying on a cross and rising from the grave. So when is the question? Prior to Jesus' second coming, these seven signs will materialize according to the Bible. Starting with indicator number one, let's see if we can plot each of them on our timeline to determine how near the second coming of Christ is. Jesus told his followers something that will blow your mind when they asked him what the sign of his coming would be. Famines, diseases, and earthquakes will occur everywhere, and nations will rise against one another, and kingdoms against one another. These are all the first signs of sorrow. The entire world will be at war. According to this Hebrew proverb, Jesus was like this 2,000 years ago. He promised to return a second time, but this time to judge the earth after coming to earth, dying on a cross and rising from the grave. So when is the question? Prior to Jesus' second coming. These seven signs will materialize according to the Bible. Starting with indicator number one, let's see if we can plot each of them on our timeline to determine how near the second coming of Christ is. Jesus told his followers something that will blow your mind when they asked him what the sign of his coming would be. Famines, diseases, and earthquakes will occur everywhere, and nations will rise against one another, and kingdoms against one another. These are all the first signs of sorrow. The entire world will be at war, according to this Hebrew proverb. There had never been a war like this. It did not follow the predictions. It had gotten out of man's grasp. People only had to endure the first global war a century ago. Jesus also remarked that the beginning of grief occurs. When you see the entire world at war with itself, over 2,000 years before that, sorrows directly translates to birth pains or birth contractions. It takes a woman nine long months to create a baby inside of her. But the baby is born just a few hours after the contractions begin. According to Jesus, a global conflict signals the start of the end, the second sign. According to Jesus, Christians will be arrested, persecuted, and slain in the future. Because you are my followers, you will be despised worldwide, he continued. Did you realize that there has never been more persecution of Christians as there are now? And I'm not alone in thinking that. High degrees of discrimination and persecution are experienced by about 365 million Christians. That represents one in seven Christians worldwide. House churches are viewed as a danger. To the government's objective in countries like North Korea and Iran, Christians may also be arrested or worse if they are discovered. We shouldn't be surprised by this because Jesus predicted just that. Sign number three just before he comes back. False prophets who will deceive and turn many people away from Jesus will appear immediately, after an increase in Christian persecution. The Lord sent me a prophetic word which I would want to share with you. Between 1.30 and 2 o'clock in the morning, I got this message. I experienced a number of visions, one every day. The Lord then gave me extremely explicit instructions regarding various things. That will occur over the course of the next month or two. It has never been simpler for these men to amass sizable fan bases of people who cling to their every word. Rather than the word of God thanks to the growth of social media. Well, there's something you need to know before we continue. Not all Christians agree with the next four signs we will examine. In actuality, there are three distinct perspectives on Christ's second coming. All Christians who believe in the Bible belong to one of these three groups. What these groups think about sign number four is also where they diverge the most. A thousand years of extraordinary peace, prosperity, and righteousness will be experienced by the entire world, according to a prophesy found throughout the Bible. Even creatures that would typically eat one another will cuddle instead since it will be so serene. These 1,000 years are referred to as the millennium in the book of Revelation. However, as previously stated, there is disagreement among Christians over the exact date of this century. According to the first camp, this millennium is an allegory that alludes to the spiritual prosperity that we Christians can currently enjoy in Christ rather than a real 1,000 years. They hold that it began when Jesus died on the cross to atone for our sins and will go on until Christ comes. We refer to this group as amillennialism, although the second camp likewise holds that the century is not merely a spiritual metaphor, they do believe that Christ will return after it. 
According to them, the millennium will start as soon. As the church is successful in sharing the gospel with people all across the world, marking the start of a period of peace and prosperity, the millennium will come after the world has become Christian and then Christ will return. We refer to this group as post-millennialism. According to the third and last group, the millennium will actually be a period of peace and prosperity on earth. However, they don't think this will occur until after Christ's second coming. When he returns to earth, he will govern for a millennium before everything is finally judged. He will then demolish the planet and create a brand new heaven and earth that will last forever. I'll tell you which camp I belong to shortly, but first, let's examine sign number five. Because it occurs gradually, this symptom is distinct from all the others. According to the post-millennial perspective, the closer the second coming of Christ approaches, the less wickedness there will be in the earth. According to them, socioeconomic conditions are getting better. Women appear to have more rights now than they did 500 years ago. And Christian charity are present in practically every nation. They contend that the degree to which the world gets more Christianized can be used to gauge how near the second coming of Christ is. Don't trust that. It is the belief of the premillennial and amillennial factions. That the world will indeed become more evil the nearer the time of Christ's return. They contend that even greater evil has eclipsed whatever advancements made in the world during the past two millennia. They cite passages like this one, which predict that imposters and bad guys will only get worse. Additionally, they cite the first three indicators which we have already covered. That the world is becoming worse rather than better. The sixth sign is one that is hardly ever mentioned. It is related to Satan. All right, this is really fascinating. According to Revelation in the Bible, Satan will be imprisoned and sent into the abyss before the year 2000. Amillennials think that this occurred at the cross and that the text just states that Satan's powers have been curtailed rather than that he is physically imprisoned. Premillennials believe that Satan is imprisoned once Christ returns to establish his 1,000-year dominion, while postmillennials think that Satan will be bound by the church as they usher in the millennium. Before we reach the last and final indication of Christ's second coming, I would like to inform you that all three end times timelines are available for download. Say that quickly three times. Let me know in the comments which timeline you think is the most correct. And it's free in the description below. In a moment, I will reveal which group I belong to. But first, let's examine our last and final indication of Christ's second coming. The seventh sign. Before Christ returns and destroys him, the Bible describes a man of sin who will declare himself to be God and persuade everyone to worship him. This sinful individual has frequently been called the Antichrist. While the majority of premillennials believe the Antichrist is a real person who will bring a false peace to the earth and usher in seven years of trouble and suffering in the world just before Christ returns. The majority of amillennials and postmillennials believe the Antichrist is a figurative spirit who will deceive the nations. They also hold to the idea of the rapture of the church. But that is a subject for another video. Which timeline, then, is the most accurate in my opinion? I subscribe to the premillennial theory of the end times because I think the Bible should be interpreted literally rather than figuratively. Indeed, I do think that the world will soon witness the literal revelation of the Antichrist. Watch this video to learn who the Bible claims this Antichrist is. Elon Musk, isn't it? 